Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the August council meeting for the city of Westmount. Bienvenue. Um, I would just ask all the councillors to go on mute or anyone else who is uh, on this Zoom call if you're not already on mute. And um, we have several updates and reports. As, uh, as we've begun some programming, I'm sure the Council Gallery will, will touch on that in terms of sports and rec and the library and whatnot. But I just want to um, mention a couple things, I think, uh, and some people had been in touch with me about this, that uh, Tom Please, our Director of Urban Planning, has, um, has left this, the city of Westmount and we wish him uh, we wish him well. He he did incredible work with us. We're incredibly grateful to uh, to the path that he set us on. He is a brilliant urban planner, and uh, we will miss him terribly. But we do wish him well, and we are very grateful for the team that he built, because we are um, we have a very very strong team in urban planning that are working uh, hard on both the architecture side and on the urban planning side. So I just wanted to take a moment to. Uh, and I'm sure that the citizens of Westmount join me in wishing him well. Um, and a couple other, I know there'll, there'll be several um, several reports tonight. I just wanted to mention uh, a pop-up shop that has uh, opened up on Sherbrooke Street in Westmount. And it is run by a group of volunteers that are selling COVID essential supplies. So masks, I went in today, it's, it's where the old folklore rud sack was. And it's been given to them by the owner, Mr. Um, Mr. Fellerath, for the month. And it's a group of students that are working on this, selling supplies. And uh, their masks are great. They've got tons of artisanal masks. They've got tons, all different kinds of sanitizers, anything that you could need like that. And all their profits go to the Montreal Children's Hospital. So I just think this, this group of young women that are, are so smart and giving back um, I just want to applaud them. So it, you can't have enough masks. So go uh, go in and buy your masks for them. And I just want to also thank uh, Mr. Fellerath for and Mr. the Fellerath for uh, helping out these uh, helping out these students and bringing this to the community while they look for a long term tenant. And I think it's uh, I think it's a great initiative. So. Um, on that note, uh, I know there are many questions uh, tonight, so we will get to those in a moment, but um, the work of the city very much continues during, uh, we continue to work uh, remotely in some instances, and then others obviously are, is not remote, but I want to thank again the employees of the city, the public works team that is working exceptionally hard in terms of um, taking care of our parks and our um, our parks and public spaces, which citizens so uh, desperately need and are enjoying this summer, and as well as the group at Sports and Rec, where we've had a successful month so far with day camps. Um, where day camps are very much in the media, but ours has not been, and as well at the pool. So on that note, I will hand it over to other councillors that may have some updates. I think uh, Councillor Bostock had an update. We don't have one today. Uh, Councillor Cutler. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, and to our audience at home, thank you for, for tuning in and participating remotely in our council meeting. It's much appreciated. So a, a couple items. Uh, first, I want to discuss, uh, I've had a number of residents reach out regarding changes to, um, to Forden and Forden Crescent um, that have been um, discussed as a result of the unfortunate and tragic death of a cyclist uh, about a month ago. And um, I, I want to make a, a few things clear because I think it's really important that nothing has been uh, approved by, by council at this point. So there are no uh, permanent changes being put in place, um, you know, particularly with regards to parking. Uh, that said, we are all, we are in the process of examining a number of recommendations that have been made to make the street safer. Um, you know, there have been stop signs installed. Uh, that was a recommendation from the SPVM, uh, among other things. But again, this has been um, this is something that we're in the process of continuing to evaluate. And with regards to parking specifically, um, none of this has been. Um, we haven't passed any bylaws changing the parking. So this is a, a work in progress, definitely an area I'm particularly concerned with, having been the commissioner for 
um, you know, for public security previously and now infrastructure and innovation um, and being in my ward. I take this very seriously, uh, but I do want everyone to know that um, that we're, this has not been decided. This is not permanent. Um, you know, we we are in the process of evaluating it. We want to make the streets safer. I think a death is um, is incredibly unfortunate. It's tragic. Uh, I, I do think that there are measures we need to have taken, and we have taken some, uh, particularly trimming down the the, um, the hedges and and the like the brush in the those partitions, but. Look, I, I hear all of you. Uh, and I just want to make it very, very clear that um, you know I'll be fighting on, on our behalf in order to make sure that this is safe, but also logical uh, and not a huge inconvenience to all of our residents. Because I understand that this is um, that this is really important to, to everybody. On that note, as well, we'll be moving. Uh, I'll be moving an item later, which is the purchase of. Um, 25 illuminated bollards, which as you've seen throughout the city, we've installed bollards on a more frequent basis over the last couple of years. We found this to be a very effective way of reminding uh, all of our motorists around the city that, hey, you know, we have pedestrians, we have cyclists, uh, and we've seen it to be an effective way to, um, to, to you know, deliver sort of the message that we're, we're putting our, our pedestrians, our cyclists, our active transportation first. And I think that that's important too. So I'm excited to, to move forward with that. Uh, I think that the bollards have been effective. Um, and so that's something that I think we're, we're looking to do. These ones in particular are illuminated. You can see there's similar models um, at Prince Albert Square and, um, uh, and, and Green. Uh, and so we'll be we'll be installing these. Uh, some of those, some of them will be used to replace broken ones. Others will be placed elsewhere. Um, I'll also be moving an item um, later that's going to be an extension of our existing contract uh, for the resurfacing of asphalt on, um, on Dorchester. And so uh, for a number of reasons, uh, we're required to go back and extend the amount that was approved from the first. So this works already under, uh, under construction, as many of you probably know. But uh, in Westmount, if it's going over budget, we need to, we don't just write a blind check and, and, uh, and, and issue, you know, whatever. Um, it's required to come back to, uh, to council for an approval. And so because of a number of things that were unknown prior to the beginning of this, particularly boreholes and some other issues, we're required to purchase more asphalt. In any case, uh, I'll be moving that item later. But I think Every time I move an item like this, I always like to highlight it because it shows how transparent the city is, particularly with these infrastructure projects. And it's what allows us as a municipality to keep the projects on budget and on time, which um, you know we're very proud of the work that we do in, in public works and engineering with regards to this. And it's how we're able to, to deliver these projects every year. Um, we don't just you know write blind checks we want to make sure everything is very very transparent to the residents so it's not it's not a lot of money um in, in the grand scheme of that project but it is important that we um, that we be clear thank you for your update uh i think the next person that uh, jeff i think does not have an update right now is uh councillor peart thank you madam mayor um, just more of a personal note, um, as some of you are no doubt aware, I'm very saddened to share that Ken London, a longtime resident of West Nile, has passed away last month. Now, Ken, Ken represented the best of civic engagement. He was a frequent account, attendee to council meetings. He asked pertinent, challenging questions and always pushed us to do a little better. And always, almost always was for the benefit of the commons. So what was great about Ken is uh, he, he would arrive with a lot of questions, but also with a lot of, uh, a lot of answers. A lot of suggestions and and some well-considered recommendations for this city so i know he'll be missed he'll be missed by his family and friends by the community by council and certainly by me as well thank you thank you and i i join you in sending our condolences to his family he was um he, he truly was a great participant in in civic life and engagement um and uh, he will be missed on, on that level. And I'm sure he'll be missed by his many friends and, and family. So um, really our sympathies go to, out to his family. Um, and the next, uh, I think Councillor Breschke has an update. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, also uh, lots of gratitude for Mr. London for his civic engagement and uh, 
yes, it definitely will be missed. So condolences to his family and, and friends and loved ones. Um, a little update on the um, Accessibility Advisory Committee. Uh, so there is a call for applications. It's still ongoing. The, uh, the deadline is August 14. So we welcome, I welcome everyone to uh, take a look at the website. There's a good description of what that committee uh, is about and encourage all those interested to please apply. Alors, euh, le comité consultatif sur l'accessibilité, euh, on est en train de, de faire un appel de candidature. Alors, s'il y a quelqu'un qui est intéressé à poser une, une application, la date limite est le 14 août. Tout le monde est bienvenu. Merci. Thanks. Thank you uh, for that update. And uh, Councillor Gallery, I think you have an update. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. I have a few updates for you this evening. Uh, the first is, I just would like to let everyone know that we successfully reopened the library. We accomplished phase two. Uh, it opened last Monday, July 27th. So in-building pickup service is now uh, allowed. It has been done safely and effectively and the feedback has been tremendous. Uh, one gentleman even brought flowers to say thank you and was so delighted to see the library team again and be back in the building. So I want to commend uh, the library on that. We'll be working on phase three. Uh, please stay tuned. Uh, we're going to go slowly and carefully as we navigate forward. Um, so always check uh, the library website and the city website. I'd also like to let you know, we, the library also accomplished their home library delivery service reopening. They started July 24th and 65 documents were successfully delivered to more than 20 patrons for the first time since last March. So very proud of that and happy to get that going and uh, it's important service that we provide. Lastly, uh, many of you may have paid attention to the fact that we were doing a pop-up music series and the first show was supposed to be yesterday um, in and around the streets of Westmount. Unfortunately, we had to cancel uh, Cantor, Gideon, Zellemeyer uh, due to the rain and risk with the technical um, provisions that were going to be needed. So he will be postponed till August 16th. So instead, our first pop-up concert will be next Sunday, the um, 9th of August, and it'll be the Jazz Trio Les Pijama. So if you're in the city on Sunday, in the next two Sundays, uh, hopefully you will find them or they will find you and you'll enjoy their music. Uh, with regard to Sports and Rec, I'd just like to update you that we're on the second week of our third session. Uh, we have one more session to go and uh, the last session starts next Monday, August 10th. So, so far so good. The camp has been going super well and the feedback there uh, yet again is very positive. I'd like to inform everyone also that the swimming pool will be opening, staying open till Labor Day. The last day will be Monday, September 7th. Um, it's a fixed uh, end date. Uh, we will be starting pool repairs shortly thereafter. Uh, with regard to fall hockey, and fall programming. We are working very hard on that. Uh, the guidelines keep changing. We will get out the information as soon as we have it in the next couple of weeks um, to update you on what we are able to provide. We'd obviously like to keep it as um, the same as before, uh, but it's a little bit out of our control and we are uh, working hard to uh, make sure it's as safe and uh, government approved friendly as possible that and lastly i just want to do a big shout out thank you to all the lifeguards because the next council meeting will be the day after their last day they've had a new summer a difficult summer a covid summer and uh it's remarkable um that her, that the pool has gone as well as it has in these new and difficult circumstances and uh also like to thank the day camp counselors they too have had um, new camp guidelines that they've had to adhere to and uh, they've all done an extraordinary job so thank you for stepping up thank you for working so hard for our residents and uh, we appreciate it tremendously so that's it from me thank you thank you uh councillor Lalam, you don't have an update for right now right um councillor kez 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to remind everyone that the deadline for the second property tax installment is fast approaching, as is August 27th. So also, also, I would like to inform everyone that the Native Women's Shelter and Resilience Montreal will be holding a memorial to honor and celebrate the lives of two of its members, Kitty Kakenert and Dina Matt, whose lives were tragically cut short. The memorial will be held this Wednesday, August 5th, 8 p.m. at Cabot Square, and all are welcome. Thanks. Thank you very much for that update, and especially for um, the update on the memorial of those uh, of those two women that were certainly their lives were cut cut too short. So um, I hope that all that can attend uh, are able to attend. Um, and then just one last thing I wanted to update on that we we are we are working on uh, with the schools throughout Westmount, um, and we've begun discussions with all the different heads of schools throughout the city, uh, and we, as you know, we have many, that how we can help them with the reopening in using public space and some of our green spaces for allowing them to use, um, to use parks and the different green space throughout the city. So we are working with them um, over the next couple of weeks to try and uh, make sure that the, back to, the transition of back to school goes as smoothly as possible. So, um, and on that note, I guess we, uh, and I just, I, many people had mentioned different updates from the city. I would just reiterate that it, I would advise you to check the website and any of the, the city's uh, social media platforms. And that's where you will get the most up-to-date news, like whether it be Sports and Rec or the library or um, any changes, whether it's ab about construction or our capital works projects or anything like that. But I would really uh, encourage you to follow us on our different social media platforms and as well look at, uh, look at our website where we will have the most up-to-date information. Uh, so now we move into uh, la première période de questions. So I hand it over to the city clerk for the tonight's questions. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So to, for today, we received uh, a few questions, some of which were on the same topic. So uh, I will read them in the order they were received. And then uh, for... Uh, best answering of the questions on the same topic, I will uh, read those ones together. So just to begin, uh, our first question is from uh, Mr. Richard Locke. And his question is as follows. Uh, my question, not for the first time, concerns the bike path on Lansdowne Avenue. I believe that Daniel Lambert has provided significant data about the increasing bike traffic on this street. I have noticed that the bike path above Sherbrooke is clearly marked both by painted lines and by bollards or cones. Below Sherbrooke, however, where the bike path is supposed to compete with the, the parked cars on the west side, no lines have been painted. Cyclists have been seen to take the west side footpath in order to be safe from the cars and a risk of dooring. Am I to hope that council has a change of heart and will shift the parking from the west to the east side for the safety of many cyclists who use this street? I certainly hope so. Uh, thank you, Mr. Locke, for the question. And I know that uh, for the line painting, it is, uh, and there will be line, obviously uh, there will be line painted and the chevrons with the bike symbols like they were in the past, but uh, we have not had the weather cooperating with us. We, we did begin late because of uh, the COVID situation. So the line painting was somewhat delayed. And then recently the weather has not been cooperating. So we are a little bit behind on line painting, but we hope to finish that uh, as soon as possible. We just need it not to rain and not be too humid uh, to get it finished. And that would address some of the line painting, but um, in terms of parking, I know that it had been looked at in the past and I think there was a petition for that block um, several years ago before I was on council. I think it was somewhere around 2012 uh, where they had decided to put the parking on that side, but uh, certainly it's something that the traffic advisory committee can look at again and look at other improvements that we can do to that, uh, to that block, which is, two direction with a lane of parking and sidewalks that are not wide enough 
So um, it certainly has some challenges in terms of space and making sure that pedestrians and cyclists are as safe as possible. And as we see an increase in uh, cyclists because of the situation that we're living in, we need to, to do as much as we can to make sure that they are, um, that, that those bike paths are safe. So thank you for the question. It is something that we will um, we will refer to the traffic advisory committee um, and have it put on the agenda there. Does anyone else want to comment on that? Does any um, councillor for the district or any of the other councillors on TAC? No. Okay. Just, thank you. Just as we do the evaluation of all of the the our safety concerns throughout the city, that we will be evaluating. Uh, that section of Lansdowne as well. Okay. Yes, Thank you. and I can add as as councillor of District Five, um, certainly there's a lot of uh, moving factors uh, to keep that strip of Lansdowne safe. And so, yes, it's been discussed at TAC, and yes, uh, it's uh, there'll be improvements, or there should be improvements uh, coming forward. So the line painting as a number one would certainly answer some some of those issues thanks thank you uh next question so our next question is um the first of a few in the same category as previously mentioned so i will read them all together in order for the full context to be assessed and responded to as a whole um and our first question is from stephen elephant and uh, his question is as follows Dear Mayor Smith and City Councillors, I do not think it is correct for the Westmount City Council to unilaterally decide to reconfigure Forden Avenue without any input from the residents living on the street. When I first moved onto the street 27 years ago, we had permitted parking on both west and east sides of the street. We now have only parking on the west side of the street. In the city letter received two days ago, it shows there will be no parking at all on the street and only limited parking on the Crescent. This is simply not acceptable. I realized that there was a tragic accident in June on the street. There is no diminishing the fact a life was lost, but I feel the city is taking a knee-jerk reaction without properly thinking out the long-term ramifications of this decision. There are many streets in Westmount which are inherently more dangerous than Forden in its current configuration. In my 27 years, this is the only accident that has taken place, not even a fender bender. For example, Mountain Street is two-way up and down from Cedar to Sherbrooke, with parking permitted on the west side. Since the parking is free, it is always jam packed. There is not sufficient room for two cars to pass. So one car must always pull into a driveway to let the other pass. Many accidents, particularly in winter time. Another example is Belvedere Place to Belvedere where exiting, when exiting this cul-de-sac, it is a blind turn either right or left at one time mirrors were in place, but they've been removed. Other examples are mountain heading north, which intersects with Severn, extremely dangerous, or Rosemont to Rosemont Crescent, where no one stops at the stop sign. Decisions cannot be made on a traffic survey alone. Civil engineers, city planners, and the residents must be part of the process to allow for a long-term and correct solution, not the reactionary one taking place now. Placing bollards in the center of the street will only enhance traffic issues and create a problem for the fire engines as they try and navigate to one side of the road. They will end up tearing them up, which will only cost the city additional funds to repair or replace. I feel that the work done to date with the clearing of the three islands, which has definitely increased the sight of drivers heading into the Crescent and the stop sign should suffice. I do not understand why the brush covering the electrical boxes could not have been left alone as they do not hinder the sight lines any more than the boxes, which are a definite eyesore. Does the city plan to remove and reconfigure those? I'm sure that the if the city would listen to residents on the street, we can find a way to make it safer without stripping the street of its beauty. There are many ways to enhance the safety of Ford and slash Ford and Crescent without destroying the inherent beauty and serenity of the street. We, the residents would like to have input as well as uh, we have many, sorry, would like to have input as we have many ideas, which we feel must be heard by the city prior to any further changes being made to our street. Examples would be making Aberdeen the fire route, a wider and straight street, then placing speed bumps on Ford and other ideas could be making the street resident only during school hours, such as has been done on Roslyn, etc. There are many possible solutions which we believe the city has not looked at. We wish to have our voice heard. 
Thank you for your time, Stephen. Now, as mentioned, I'm gonna continue on the questions from the residents of Forden uh, on the same topic. To the May, this question is from Murray Goods. To the mayor and city councilors, my name is Murray Goods and I've lived together with my wife, Naomi at 55 Forden Avenue since 1983. Stephen Elephant is my next door neighbor and he has sent me the email he recently submitted to you regarding the proposed traffic changes to Forden. I fully support Stephen's comments. And as an architect, I would like to add that some of the proposed traffic configurations will affect the character of Forden in an unfortunate way. I've always enjoyed the imagery of this winding, modestly scaled roadway, a modestly scaled roadway, making its way up the hill from Montrose to Westmount Avenue, collecting Ford and Crescent at the triangles in an imaginary manner. This image is not likely to survive the proposed installation. I'm particularly offended by the suggestion that bollards would be placed on the center line of the avenue, in which case Forden would present as a high traffic artery as opposed to the private local way that is meant to be. Surely an alternative solution can be found. Consultation with the affected parties on Forden Avenue and Crescent would be highly desirable. Thank you for your consideration in this matter, Murray Goods. Next question is from Sandra Murdoch. And the question is as follows. I'm writing to council to address the proposed modifications to the man management of traffic and to the parking regulations pertaining to Forden Avenue. The modifications are to be implemented with the stated objective of improving and increasing the safety of all road users, including pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists. While I agree with the intent of the proposed modifications, I am concerned that they do not adequately serve the stated objective. As a resident of 53 Forden Avenue, I observe on a daily basis the use of excessive speed on our street on the part of motorists, putting pedestrians, cyclists, and indeed motorists themselves at risk. The proposed modifications do little to alleviate this risk. The first proposal is the creation of a no parking zone on the west side of Forden Avenue. The stated intent of this modification is to allow for better visibility with the observation that the current road with makes it difficult for vehicles to circulate in both directions. This proposed modification does not take into account the speed with which motorists navigate the street. Borden Avenue is a residential street and the removal of residential parking will create a throughway. The proposed removal of the parking zone could reasonably be reasonably be expected to lead to the use of increased speed on the street, putting pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists at increased risk of injury. The second proposal is the installation of bollards on the center line of Forden Avenue to function as a calming measure to enforce the speed limit. I am not confident that this will have the desired effect of reducing speed as it further functions to create a throughway and it creates additional issues. With the bollards in place, I'm concerned that motorists will attempt to pass the cyclists, putting them at risk of injury. In addition, I'm concerned with the safety of pedestrians who attempt to cross Forden Avenue if a throughway is created. It is a considerable distance between the stop signs at the intersection of Forden Avenue and Montrose Avenue on the south end of the street and the intersection of Forden Avenue and Westmount Avenue on the north end. Pedestrians regularly cross the street at points between the stop signs. The creation of a throughway and the speed with which motorists navigate the stretch puts these pedestrians at increased risk. I would suggest that a more reasoned solution to the issues being considered is as follows. The modification of the stretch of Forden Avenue between Montrose Avenue and Westmount Avenue from two-way flow to one-way flow. In order to maintain the existing fire route, the one-way flow would be in a northerly direction. Parking on the west side of Forden Avenue to be maintained in keeping with its status as resident and those are his two points. The next paragraph is thank you for your consideration of these proposals. I would welcome consultation with all concerned parties. It is of paramount importance that the solution adequately addresses the safety of pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists. Another question uh, on the topic is from Donald Murdoch. I am writing to the council to express my concerns regarding the proposed modifications to Ford and Avenue and Ford and Crescent. The recent death of a cyclist in our neighborhood was a tragic event. However, I'm not convinced that the proposed plan will correct the conditions that led to the accident. Furthermore, the proposal to severely limit the street parking will bring inconveniences without bringing any improvements to road safety. My wife Sandra and I live at 53 Ford and Avenue and have owned our home since 1998. We believe that there should be a broader consultation with the residents before any corrective actions are taken. During the period that we have lived on the street, we have noticed that Forden is a popular route for drivers who are looking for a shortcut to access Sherbrooke and the Boulevard, but not necessarily residents of the neighborhood. Furthermore, 
there are many cars that pass by in front of our house on a regular basis that are going way too fast, which causes dangerous conditions for pedestrians and cyclists. I think the project should be reconsidered to address these two main problems. And now we have another question from Sandra Murek. Would the city consider consultation with the residents of Forden Avenue and Forden Crescent regarding the proposed modification to the management of traffic and to the parking regulations on these streets? The residents have some thoughtful suggestions with the goal of improving the safety of pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists. And a final question on the matter from Daniel Lambert, um, entitled Ford and Safety Improvements. And Dan, Dan Lambert uh, is, the, uh, is writing to us on behalf of the Association of Pedestrians and Cyclists of Westman. His question is as follows. The introduction first is that we want to thank the city for its prompt action to make Forden and Forden Crescent safer after the fatal collision on June 16th. So far, the city has removed shrubs which blocked visibility at intersections, at its stop signs, cut back tree branches which hit a stop sign, and added a bollard in the middle of Forden at Monroe's to help prevent drivers from speeding through that intersection. The question is the, as follows. What other safety measures does the city have planned? And when does the city expect those measures to be implemented? As mentioned previously, we appreciate improvements to Forden, but it remains a low probability location for collisions. We hope the city will soon provide safe access for cyclists along its busy streets where the probability of collisions is much higher. And those are the questions re relating to the uh, traffic configuration on Forden Avenue and Forden Crescent. So uh, with that, Okay. Uh, thank you for the questions. Certainly a lot of details in there and a lot of recommendations. Um, and we hear the residents of, uh, we hear the residents of Forden. So just to, uh, to start out first, obviously, um, it was a very tragic situation that happened on, uh, on Forden in the month of June. Um, one that we hope we never ever have to deal with again in the city of Westmount. Uh, and so with that came several recommendations from uh, this, this SPVM and the city of Montreal and the, the traffic team there have come together with several different recommendations, some of which we were able to implement very quickly, like um, cleaning up the islands and making sure the shrubs were taken back and putting in the stop signs. The rest are going to be evaluated by the traffic advisory committee. And so I think there was some miscommunication there in terms of how we dealt with the parking issue on the west side of the street. And that is, is it's on the agenda for tomorrow morning for the traffic advisory committee. So we will um, certainly share all of your questions and your comments. Um, Many of them uh, are very good suggestions and you live on the street, you experience, uh, you experience the street and we will share that with the committee which is made up of our traffic engineer as well as the SPVM. And obviously we are looking at this from the lens of safety, but um, we certainly will discuss, uh, so there, you know, the decision has not been made on that front and uh, this will be very much part of the discussion that takes place at the traffic advisory committee. Um, but we are pleased that we were able to act quickly on some of the recommendations, which was um, dealing with some of the landscaping and, and the stop signs, but uh, other recommendations were uh, one option was the one way, one option was removal of parking, um, and then some variations in between of, of uh, how much parking and things like that. So this, this issue uh, will be discussed, and I thank you for your input in it, and we will certainly communicate, um, we will certainly communicate with all of you who took the time um, to share very insightful comments on um, on what it is like to live on that street. So um, does anyone else wanna comment on this from uh, the traffic advisory committee? Uh, I can uh, comment. Sure, Councillor Cutler. So I mentioned this obviously in my remarks um, prior to question period, but I will say a couple of things. First off, I wanna thank all the residents who, who wrote in there and have wrote me uh, for a couple of reasons. First, I think it's really important that you are involved in this process. Um, and I, I don't want you to think that you weren't, so it's great that you're involved. I also think that your recommendations are, um, are very much 
um, to be considered, right? You're the ones who live on the streets. You're the ones who know exactly what's going on. You see it every day. Um, you know, so I, I really do appreciate that. Uh, and I think that you should know that, you know, that, that your voices are being heard and that this is not a process that's happening unilaterally. Um, you know, this is something that requires a number of stakeholders to be involved. Obviously, as the mayor mentioned, safety is top priority at all times. Um, and that's the case, you know, on Forden, but it's also the case throughout the city. And I think that to a certain degree, that's why the administration is so quick to react to this, because we know how important council and, and all of our residents really take pedestrian cyclist safety, but there's a right way and a wrong way of doing things. And I think that, you know, we need to be thoughtful. We need to uh, put in place the steps necessary um, to make sure it's safe, but that doesn't mean dramatically changing the lifestyle for a residence. Um, so anyway, all that to say, I really appreciate the, the feedback and the comments, and I really appreciate the engagement we've had from the residents because it's with your voices that we're going to able, be able to come to the best possible resolution solution to this. Uh, but I do want to emphasize that we're going to be discussing this tomorrow. Um, and so it's great that everyone was able to send their feedback now because we can now use that when we speak with the administration um, and, and the other members of TAC uh, because we'll have feedback from the residents. So we appreciate that. Thank you, uh, Councillor Shami. I just want to add my voice to Councillor Cutler and to you, the mayor, uh, to our residents on Fordin and Fordin Crescent. And Cutler just mentioned uh, to work with TAC uh, and the administration to make it better. Uh, we have to we have to reach out and uh, try to improve. Uh, but your comments are really very very important to us. So um, I uh, look forward to seeing uh, and hearing how it goes uh, tomorrow and in future meetings and getting back to the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, are there any other questions? Yes, we have uh, a few more. Uh, the following, the, the next question is from uh, Roger uh, Joshim. Uh, I had submitted a, sorry, sometimes. Yoakum, yeah. Yoakum, there we go. There we go, Roger Yoakum. And his question is as follows. I had submitted a question to the council meeting of the 6th of July requesting that the presentation slash report from Labos 4 regarding the WAG be made public in the days before that council meeting on a, in a sidewalk conversation with a citizen on Melville, Councillor Lullum stated that Labosphore had recommended against an artificial surface for the WAG with an organic infill as had been requested by the Westmount Soccer Club numerous times. Soon afterwards, that same Melville citizen while walking happened to meet Councillor Bostock who corroborated Councillor Lullum's information. But in the 43rd minute of the July 6th council meeting, Mayor Smith stated that the Labo Spores task has not been presented to council at this point, so we await their report. Clarification, I would think, is needed. Two questions, please. One, has Mayor Smith not received the same information, opinion, sorry, the same informed opinion from Labo Spore as had councillors Lalam and Bostock before? 6th of July council meeting that Labos 4 has recommended against an artificial turf field with an organic infill for the WAG. Two, is Westmount still engaged with Labos 4 in researching artificial turf fields? And if so, what is the ongoing cost to Westmount taxpayers? Um, so uh, he is asking me, uh, I'm not sure I can comment on I, I'm not sure who this resident of Melville is um, and what exactly the context of the conversation is. So I won't address that side of uh, his commentary. Uh, what had happened with Labospor was that they gave a generalized, um, we had a, you know, a generalized information session with him at GC about um, different turf fields because we had been asked by several residents uh, for years, as Mr. Yoakum knows, about, uh, about turf and having the option of turf somewhere in Westmount. They discussed that with us at general committee, which um, Mr. Yoakum is aware of, but they did not give us a report. Um, what was that what they were then asked for was to give us uh, a report of the different environment, of the different options of turf that is on the market and what the environmental impact is of those different options. 
Um, but no decision has been made in terms of where a turf field, if a turf field were to go anywhere. Um, but I think it's important to have the most up-to-date data on what, um, on what the environmental impact truly is and the different options. And so I know that there are, I've heard from a number of Westmount residents that were involved uh, in the sort of, that were against having any turf originally that was suggested in Westmount Park uh, years ago. And I have heard from them and Mr. Yoakum is one of them, but I think it is, we owe it to our citizens to know what the environmental impact now is of the turf, but also, we have asked for our um, to have a better understanding of the environmental impact of our grass fields and how much water we're using on them and what what goes into the maintenance of those fields. And so, when there is when uh, and if I'm not sure where they are at with it, a, a report is made uh, to council. Mr. Yoakum can go through the process of access to information to um, acquire that document. So that uh, I don't know if any of the councillors, anyone else wants to comment on that? Um, Councillor Lullum. Um, I echo, I said exactly what you just said. Um, the one thing I did say to a citizen on Melville was that we don't have a turf field in our PTI at the moment. And the worry was we were gonna start digging this fall. And so otherwise I, said exactly what you said. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think that answers the question, but uh, thank you for the question. And uh, I know it's a, a concern of Mr. Yoakum. So um, if there are any develop developments on that, we will keep citizens appraised. Next question. All right. Our next question is from Bridget Stock. And her question is as follows regarding the sound wall west of Green. Good afternoon. Whereas there is a court case pending to require the Ministry of Transport and Turcot to build a sound wall with the new construction, whereas Turcot project will soon be completed, my question is the city still meeting with lawyers to ensure resolution of the case? Thank you very much for your answer. Yours truly, Bridget Stock. Um, thank you, Ms. Stock, for your uh, question. And I think you had been, you were a representative on the Bon Voisinage Committee, I think, for a while uh, for the city, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not wrong. Um, so long been involved in this issue. And yes, the, we, we continue uh, to fight this issue in terms of, uh, of trying to force the government to acknowledge that, you know, their change in plans and their, um, the change in plans on the Turcot is a disservice to our citizens and that we want a sound barrier along the Turcot uh, to benefit our citizens. So I don't know if you, if the city clerk wants to comment or the DG on the next, uh, any of the next legal steps or if we can, but yes, we are still very much involved. Or we still are moving forward with it. No, I have nothing else to add, uh, Mayor Smith. I just want to, I guess, say that uh, we are we're still continuing with our legal proceeding. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions or is that it for tonight? Yeah, sorry, just a couple more questions. The next question is from Patricia Dumay. And the question is as follows, dear Mayor and Council, thanks to a bit of much needed TLC, the WAG has lately undergone a noticeable transformation, becoming a lush, verdant field, much to the delight of its users and nearby residents. When enlisting expertise, the question is, when enlisting expertise from Labospore, did the city do its due diligence and request a comprehensive comparative study between the use of synthetic turf and natural grass for the WAG? those elements to consider being expenses, pros, cons, impact on surroundings, et cetera? Uh, that's the question. Okay, yeah. so um, I just, first off, in terms of the WAG, I, I, it does, the WAG does look great. Um, and it was, uh, we heard from several residents, I'm not sure if Ms. Uh, Ms. Dume was one of them, when we had to close it for two weeks and, um, I, I understand it's a stressful time. People were very, very angry. 
that we um, closed the WAG for, I think in the end, it ended up being two and a half weeks. It was going to be two to three weeks and it ended up being two and a half weeks. Um, and it was a decision that was made because it needed, um, it needed the investment and it needs all of our fields are heavily used normally. They, and now they are even more heavily used. The WAG is very much one of them. And so they, they need to undergo this type of maintenance. And I'm glad that we did it. Uh, and I know that residents were, there were, a, you know, a, a group of residents very angry wanting us to take down the fence and to stop the seating. Um, but it, uh, I think the result is, um, is very much worth it. So that will happen in other fields uh, on, on a schedule that, uh, that is important. But in terms of, um, I think she's asking about the lab report report, which is, is not done, but yeah, I mean, the whole point is for us to have a better understanding of the environmental impact of a grass field and as well, at, uh, all the different options for turf, because there are several different options, uh, for turf and to just to, to have that data. And I think that's very important for, uh, for every municipal, for anyone to have. So, um, yes. So the, uh, I agree with her. The, uh, the turf at the WAG is, is, uh, is much improved. So um, does Kathleen Kez, the city councillor for the district, want to comment on the WAG or? Yeah, no, the WAG is looking very good. It's much more improved. It's lush. It's residents are using it and it was worth the two week wait. Okay. So uh, thank you, Ms. Dume, for your input and uh, your commentary on that. So one last question. Uh, this question is from Daniel Lambert. And uh, it is entitled, Reduce Greenhouse Gases from Transportation. Uh, and again, uh, Dan Lambert is coming to us on behalf of the Association of Pedestrians and Cyclists of Westmount. Uh, the following is the preamble to his question. We wish to highlight our concern about the lack of action by Westmount over the past three years to reduce greenhouse gases from motor vehicles, the biggest contributor to climate change. Priority measures for Westmount are easy to identify. Replace some driving lanes with protected bike paths along Sherbrooke Street and the Lansdowne Danger Zone. Routes used heavily by through traffic drivers and bicyclists. Many cities around the world, including Montreal, have already made similar changes along their busy arteries. We appreciate the constant hard work and dedication of the city of the Westmount officials to address a wide range of issues, including COVID-19. We understand that given its limited resources, Westmount must carefully choose the issues it will address. And we understand that to replace some driving lanes with protected bike paths along two busy streets, Westmount must overcome some obstacles and opposition. However, we feel that the climate crisis and related active mobility is of such importance that Westmount must allocate the necessary resources to tackle this issue. COVID has presented Westmount with the perfect opportunity since many people are driving less because they now work from home and shop online, while others have begun to travel by bike and to avoid public transportation, but they need safe bike paths. Despite the recent completion of Villemarie Expressway, Westmount continues to encourage through traffic by offering excess driving lanes. On the other hand, our neighbors in NDG will soon widen the Sherbrooke Street bus lanes to encourage cycling ahead of any parallel measures by Westmount. Finally, we see how Westmount residents are directly impacted by intense rainstorms, likely a result of climate change. While Westmount alone cannot reverse climate change, it has an obligation to residents to do what it can to reduce the climate change gases. And the question is, we therefore implore council to decide now to replace some driving lanes with protected bike paths along Sherbrooke Street and the Lansdowne Danger Zone before the end of its current mandate. And that's all. Um, thank you for uh, the question. And um, just th thank you to Mr. Lambert as well as um, to the members of the Cycling Association that did have some input as well on Forden Avenue in terms of um, the stop signs and the, and the islands and things like that. Uh, I, and, you know, I, I agree with you. I wish it were so simple to, to, to pull up uh, a lane of traffic in each direction. 
it's it's not, but I think it's a, a community that has become more and more. And we have added bike paths all over the place, but we haven't added them on Sherbrooke Street. And we um, will continue to invest in. You know, we've made significant investments in Bixie and other um, and trying to push active transportation. Uh, and it is something that we will continue to talk about with Montreal and with NDG to make sure that it. Uh, makes the most sense, but it's, uh, I, I agree with you that we need more protected bike lanes. Um, and it's, it's the logistics of, uh, the, the, the challenge is, um, is where and, and building that network. Um, but I think the biggest risk is when you don't have a network for bike paths. So, um, I wish I had an answer that was going to please the cycling association more. I know that won't, but, um, I just, I, you know, I thank, I want to thank them for continuing to to work with us and push us to make sure that uh, the bike lanes that we have are as safe as possible, and to, you know, reconfigure them where we need to. So I don't. Does anyone else have any commentary on this? No. Okay. Um. Uh, are there any more questions? No. No further questions. Okay. Um. So now we move into the more formal part of the evening. And we have a new pro mayor in Councillor Shami. So uh, I would, on va commencer avec l'adoption de l'ordre du jour. Councillor Shami. Je propose que l'ordre de la séance ordinaire du conseil le 3 août. Uh, 2020 soit adopté. Thank you. And do I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Breschke, all in favor? Carried. Uh, confirmation of the minutes. Again, Councillor Shami. Merci, Madame la Maresse. Je propose que le procès verbal de la séance. Uh, Councillor Shami keeps freezing. Um, I'm not sure if. That better? You're better now. So, 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 yes, repeat that. Je propose que le procès verbal de la séance ordinaire du conseil tenu le 20 juillet 2020 soit approuvé. Thank you. And a seconder, Councillor Lalam, all in favor? Carried. Uh, reports to Council. There is no correspondence to be tabled. 6.2 minutes of the General Committee. Councillor Shami. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The minutes of the General Committee meeting of Council held on July 6th are tabled and are available on the city's website. Thank you. Item 6.3, Councillor Kez, Finance and Administration. There are no reports tabled. Uh, 6.4, Councillor Bostock. I move that the minutes of the Transportation Advisory Committee meeting held on July 2nd, 2020 are tabled and are available on the city's website. Thank you. 6.5, Councillor Shami, the Manpower Report. The Manpower Report for the month of June 2020 is now tabled. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kez, 6.6. Yeah, the list of payments for the month of June 2020 are tabled. Thank you. 6.7, Councillor Shammy, list of approvals in virtue of bylaw 1507. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. In accordance with bylaw 1507 on the delegation of powers to certain employees of the city of Westmount, the list of authorization of expenditures for the month of June 2020 is tabled. Thank you. Uh, puis, numéro 7, orientation de conseil sur les sujets devant être présenté au conseil d'agglomération de Montréal, Councillor Shammy. Madam Mayor, I move that the mayor or in her absence, the acting mayor be authorized to make any decisions she deems necessary in the best interest of the city of Westmount and its residents regarding the items on the agenda of the Montreal Agglomeration Council meeting to be held on the 27th of August, 2020. Uh, thank you. Do I have a seconder for that item? Councillor Breschke, all in favor? Carried. Um, item number eight, nomination, acting substitute director general. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the director of engineering, Ms. Alista Gaetano, be appointed acting substitute DG 
effective the 3rd of August, 2020. And as such, in the absence or in the incapacity of uh, the Director General uh, and the Substitute Director General, Ms. Jocelyn Dragon, be authorized to execute the authority and the signing privileges of those regularly performed by the DG. Thank you very much. Uh, a seconder on that. Councillor Bostock, for anyone who knows Ms. Gaetano, they will know that she is fully capable of, um, of such, a, such a nomination. And so um, all in favor, carried. Item number nine, nomination, remuner remuneration advisor, human resources. Again, Councillor Shami. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that Ms. Bojena Zams be appointed to the position of remuneration advisor of the HR department, grade seven, effective August 4th, 2020, in accordance with the salary recommendation of the director of human resources department as stipulated in the, in the decision-making file number 2020-1063, and according to the terms provided for the working conditions and remuneration of management personnel, and that this appointment be on a permanent basis once Ms. Zams has completed a probationary period in accordance with section two of the working conditions and remuneration of management personnel. Thank you very much. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor uh, Breschke, uh, any further comment? Typically, uh, if we were in an in-person council session, you would, uh, the public will get to meet her, but, and we would be able to congratulate her. We had to do that via Zoom earlier this afternoon, but we welcome her aboard and uh, we look forward to her uh, working with the team at HR and with the rest of the employees of the city. All in favor? Carried. Um, item number 10, which is the uh, demande d'aide financière au projet 2020-2021, Ministère de la Culture et des Communications du, du Québec, Councillor Gallery. Je propose que dans le but d'élargir les collections existantes de la Bibliothèque publique de Westmount, sa directrice soit autorisée et déposer une demande d'aide financière auprès du ministre de la Culture et des Communications du Québec, le ministre, dans le cadre du programme Aide au projet, appel de projet en développement des collections des bibliothèques publiques autonomes pour l'exercice financier 2020 jusqu'à 2021 que la Ville de Westmount s'engage à financer, financer les dépenses d'acquisition admissibles énumérées dans la demande d'aide au projet qui sera présente au ministère pour faire l'objet d'une subvention. Que la directrice de la Bibliothèque publique de Westmount et des événements communautaires soit autorisée à signer tout document nécessaire pour et au nom de la Ville. Merci beaucoup. Est-ce que j'ai un appui sur cette motion? Councillor Breschke. Um, do you have any further comments? Is there any other comments on that? Councillor Gallery? A program that can help us uh, expand our collection and uh, it's an important grant for us. Great. Um, all in favor? Carried. Um, item number 11, call for tenders by invitation supply and delivery of ballers for the City of Westmount. Councillor Cutler. Madam Mayor, I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $57,239.19, including tax credits for the supply and delivery of bollards for the City of Westmount, tender number, or tender by invitation number INV 2020-027, and to award Lumen, Division de Sonnepal Canada Inc., the contract for this purpose at its bid price for a maximum amount of $62,684.39, including taxes, the whole in conformity of the contractual documents of the call for tenders by invitation INV 2020-027, and to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file number 2020-1060. Thank you. And do I have a seconder on this? Councillor Lullum, thank you. Uh, any further, you had dis discussed this before. Do you have any further comments on this? No? Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Carried. Item number 12, um, modification to a contract asphalt resurfacing and sidewalk reconstruction, Dorchester Boulevard westbound between Atwater Avenue and Green Avenue. Uh, Councillor Cutler. 
Mayor, I move that the contract awarded to Les Entreprises de Construction of Entech Inc. for the asphalt resurfacing and sidewalk re reconstruction Dorchester Boulevard Westmount between Atwater Avenue and Green Avenue, resolution number 2020-0477 be modified and increased to a maximum amount of $862,479.21, including taxes, that an additional uh, expenditure be authorized in the amount of $78,407.20, including taxes for the asphalt resurfacing and sidewalk reconstruction, Dorchester Boulevard westbound between Atwater Avenue and Green Avenue with Les Entreprises de Construction Ventec Inc. and to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making files number 2020-0947 and 2020-0162. Uh, thank you. Do I have a seconder on this motion? Uh, Councillor Kez. Uh, and just on this one, uh, as you had discussed before, Councillor Cutler, um, and you had given an explanation as to why we're, we're revisiting this, there had been uh, some questions, I think, from residents, and it had been discussed. Um, certainly, the engineering team had looked at this street, and I know um, Councillor Peart had asked some questions about this in terms of the re like, that it, it appears like it's being, it, it very much needed to be paved if that was, um, so it is not a full reconstruction, it's the, the asphalt. And the sidewalks were in such disrepair that uh, they needed, it was more, effect, more efficient to do a rebuild of the sidewalks, um, but they are essentially the same size sidewalks as they were before, because any change in it would trigger um, you would have to deal with, it would essentially become a complete rebuild of the street, which we were not, um, we were not uh, going to do at this point. So any movement of the sidewalk meant a change in the catch basins, which then triggered a whole um, redesign of, of the water system underneath. So that hopefully clarifies to some residents that, but it will be um, a welcome addition. Um, to the neighborhood for um, for the sidewalks. Anyways, it's uh, and I, I think many may have seen in the press that uh, Microsoft is going their gaming uh, arm is going into the building at 1100 Atwater. So um, when those people are back in an office building, they will uh, they will be seemingly the main tenant there. So um, anyways, hopefully that clarifies a little bit of the that. Um, of what those sidewalks look like and, and the paving of that street. So all in favor? Carried. Um, item number uh, 13, which is uh, again, Councillor Cutler, intermunicipal agreement with the city of Montreal for the rehabilitation work on water mains and an optimization of a secondary water supply system. Madam Mayor, I move that the Director of Legal Services and City Clerk be authorized to sign the attached Entente Intermunicipale avec la Ville de Montréal pour les travaux de réhabilitation des conduites d'eau et d'optimisation de réseaux aqueducs secondaires, that the City of Westmount commit to bear 100% of the actual work costs related to the completion of the work in accordance with Schedule D of the agreement. Sorry, I'm on mute. Thank you. Uh, a seconder on this motion, Councillor Gallery. Uh, any further comments on this? So our water network is obviously interconnected with the City of Montreal's water network, uh, and they will be redoing parts of it um, over the next year. And so um, anyway, this is we're going to be paying for our portion of some of that work, but. Uh, these water mains, I, I don't have the exact years, but I believe they, they date back to 1880s, 1890s. They're, yeah, they're... there's we have several that are dated 1894 um, in that in those years as well. So it's um, yeah, they're they're old. OK, thank you. Uh, and we had a seconder on that already. Right. Um, now, all in favor. Carried. And now our final motion of the evening, the approval of building permits. Councillor Peart. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that according to the recommendations made by the Planning Advisory Committee at its meetings held on July 14th and 28th of 2020, the building permit applications appearing on the attached list reviewed under bylaw 1305 on site planning and architectural integration programs be approved. Thank you, Councillor Lullum would like to second that. Uh, a short list today. 
Short but large. Um, yes, significant. Significant projects here. The we have a new house going up at 480 Mount Pleasant on the on the bend. Um, brand new property at 4469. The vacant lot beside the kids. There is a multi-story. I think about a six-unit condominium that's that's going up there. Finally filling in that void that's been long standing along this strip and a couple of smaller projects but again last but not least of course is the advancement of the project of saint leon the the school expansion so like i said it's a small list but quite a significant one one of the larger ones we've had in a while um yes thank you uh for that so cynthia councillor lalam has uh seconded that and all in favor carried and on with that, are there any further questions, Major Brownstein, from online? I do not see any received. Uh, given the lag, we can see, uh, we can give them another few seconds, but uh, no, doesn't appear. Okay. On that note, I just remind citizens uh, that we still have masks to give out. So if you want a mask, if you need a mask, um, you can obviously buy them in many of our retailers and in our COVID, and in the COVID pop-up shop, but also you can get one from the city um, by visiting westmount.org slash masks. So on that note, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your summer um, and a, a, a different summer it is, but I hope that uh, you're able to enjoy it all the same and we will uh, rejoin in, um, well, we'll have a mid-month meeting uh, for permits primarily, and then again in September. So thank you.